Collection. Welcome back to Collection Cutdown. Today's video is on Air Force One. So we're back to action movies, which, as you may know, is probably my favourite genre. I'm pretty sure I've discussed on these videos before somewhere that I love the diehard trope. And by that I mean one lone person against an army and they pick them off one by one by crawling through the air vents or, in this case, Air Force One. This is one of the most famous movies that came in the wake of Die Hard that have that trope. Uh, there's lots of low budget ripoffs. This was one of the higher budget ones with Harrison Ford. It's also one of the best. It's not the only one set on an aeroplane and in fact I don't think it's the only one set on a presidential plane but it is, uh, it is very entertaining. Uh, but again, it's one that I haven't seen for a long time. I am looking forward to seeing this one again. I do remember quite a bit about it, mostly, you know, the stuff on the plane. So the story is that Harrison Ford plays the president and the plane is hijacked, but he is a veteran and knows how to handle himself, so he does what he can to survive the situation and get out. Definitely my favourite part of the film is the bits where he's on the plane doing the diehard stuff, because that is obviously my thing. Like many people, I've always liked Harrison Ford, I always think he's very charming, good value, and he always works well in action movie roles. This is no exception, he's very good and presidential as a president who can also kick some ass. I don't remember there being a particular weak spot in this movie, but who knows, maybe there is. Uh, I am looking forward to watching this one again, so I will see you all on the other side. Air Force One is very much a classic in the action movie genre, and I can see why. It's very entertaining. Obviously the die-hard element is my favourite part of this. I don't know what it is about that trope, having one lone person face off against an army and slowly pick them off, but I find it vastly entertaining to watch. And to have the extra danger element of having it on a plane like this, particularly a presidential plane, is very cool. I think I said in the opening that the movie is about the president's plane gets hijacked by terrorists and he is a veteran of the Vietnam War and so he faces off against them to save his family and staff members, the other hostages, and eventually saves the day. This probably won't surprise anybody, but even though I love Harrison Ford and I think he's great in this as always, my favourite character was actually Glenn Close's Vice President. Um, I thought she was terrific, uh, strong, capable. I really enjoyed watching her be tough as nails and getting everything done. That was really cool. Another thing I liked about this film, which I find is actually weirdly rare in movies, maybe slightly more common these days, but the bad guys actually spoke their own language amongst themselves. I'm pretty sure it was Russian. Often in movies, particularly movies like this, the actors will speak English but just accent it. And uh, that was a little bit like that here. So Gary Oldman is obviously not Russian or from that part of the world. However, when the bad guys spoke amongst themselves, it was subtitled. They didn't do it in English. And I actually really appreciated that. I think it adds a level of realism because, of course, that is how it would work, and there is no reason that it has to be English. People can deal with reading subtitles for a couple of scenes. One thing that I noticed this time around, which I didn't notice the last time I watched this a couple of years ago, was that the special effects were actually much worse than I remember them being. Obviously that's a hazard in this day and age, as our special effects get better and better, that the stuff from the 80s and 90s and before is going to look increasingly dodgy. But uh, that, that kind of added an element of fun to it for me because, you know, even just a couple of years ago that wasn't something that I really noticed much. So everything from the green screen um, to the plane landing in water and things like that, uh, yeah, it, it was funny to see that. Because this is me, I would have preferred a little bit more time of him you know, in the bowels of the plane, you know, doing his die-hard thing, because that's, you know, one of my favourite parts. Once everybody started working together and the hostages got saved, I kind of lost interest a little bit just because it wasn't that 
tropey element that I liked, but it really, that's just a personal taste thing. I did think they were pretty good at building tension. For example, there's this whole sequence where they launch the escape pod and you think the president is on it and has saved himself when the terrorists first take over. And you don't find out until quite a little bit later that he has actually stayed on the plane and just launched that as a decoy. It was good that they made the audience find out at the same time that the characters did. So that actually worked for me. And there's another scene later on where the president tries to send a fax and it arrives in the middle of all this bustle in the situation room and you don't know whether or not they're going to get it in time to help rescue the hostages for their plan. So I thought that was quite clever ways of building tension into the story. One thing I also must do a shout out to is the score in this. Every time I hear that music I feel very, you know, patriotic for a country I've never even been to, America. I think that they did a great job with the music in this and, and I think it really works well for the story they're telling. Naturally, I do wish that the wife, played by Wendy Crewson, had a little bit more to do. I thought they, you know, tried to build her into the situation a bit, but really I, I would have preferred to have her be more central. But, you know, that's my thing with female characters, so again, your mileage may vary on that one. So overall, what did I think of Air Force One? Well, obviously I like it. It's a classic in the action movie genre. I've seen it quite a few times and I will probably see it again, particularly when I'm on one of my Die Hard on an X kicks, which I do get on occasionally. So, uh, for me, this one is always a keeper. I love Harrison Ford, I love the trope, it's a no-brainer for me. Next time, we have a semi-sequel to Air Force One, which is Air Force Two. It actually has nothing to do with Air Force One, it just uses the title, I guess, for marketing purposes, but it is to do with the Vice President, so I guess it kind of works. I saw this one not too long ago, but I am actually quite keen to talk about this one, so I will see you all next time for Air Force Two. Well that's it from me today. If you've been enjoying my videos please consider liking, subscribing and commenting. I love hearing from people and chatting about movies and other things. Otherwise, goodbye for now and happy watching! <laughs>